today so Chuck's going to help me if one of them slips in later or any of the other board members do. Uh, we have a fabulous board and uh, the next meeting we're going to highlight them and have them come and make some presentations so you can you can look forward to that. Um, first thing is to take a moment of remembrance you have the list of residents who passed away in the second quarter. If we could turn to that and take a minute of silence, please. There's plenty of cheers right down here, so come on in. Um, everyone that uh, is a new resident that is on the next page, um, if you are here, if you would stand and let us welcome you. Uh, we've got quite a, all right, thank you. Others? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Secretary Lori Humphreys is on vacation in the cool weather. And so, Kathy, if you'll present our minutes, May the 15th, please. I move that we accept the minutes from the April 15, 2024, quarterly meeting. Is there a second? Oh, sorry. Good. All those in favor? Okay, the motion is passed. And who was that that, was that Paul? Yeah, yeah seconded. Second. <laughs> okay, Sharon Verlander. acceptance of these financials. Is there a second? I'll do that. <laughs> I think Randall beat you to it up here. Randall Parker. Randall Parker. Seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is any of you Are there other questions Sharon wants to know? Anybody have any questions? If you're not comfortable asking me here, I live in the Preston. You can find my phone number in the directory. I'll be happy to show you the books and answer the questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's time for my president's report, and um, some of you all know that I worked at the at the Texas Legislature for the first 30 years of my career with statewide elected officials and 
And um, there was a tradition in the Senate, I was trying to see if Max Sherman is here, because I know he would remember, and maybe Tibby. There was a tradition in the Senate where elected officials uh, could ask for a point of personal privilege. Um, and um, that was always a real highlight of, of, a, of a Senate coming to session. And so I'm going to take the prerogative of being your elected president and uh, just take a moment of, of a point of personal privilege um, to say from my, from my heart how much I empathize, sympathize, and share with each and all of you all in the incredible number of crises that just continue to happen uh, internationally, um, nationally, um, state level, and we have a hurricane hitting Texas now. Um, and um, I woke up this morning thinking about this particular Thomas Paine essay, The Crisis, and I got up and I looked it up and I read the whole thing in context. And as you know, it's over 250 years old, um, but it really still spoke to me in the context of, of back in the days when Thomas Paine was talking about the crisis. And, um, and the, the famous lines are, these are the times that try men's souls. Is there anyone here that is not feeling like your soul's been tried lately? Gosh, it just keeps happening. And, and I won't, I mean, it's pages and pages long. And, and if you look it up, it really helps kind of get history and everything in context. But the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But the person that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Heaven knows how to put a proper prize upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. And uh, I just, that just really spoke to me this morning. And, uh, and then to read the whole thing. If you have a chance, look it up and read the whole thing in the context of um, we individually feel like we are all alone when all these crises keep hitting and compounding and so forth. And uh, this just kind of puts it in the context and in a, in a weird kind of a way, you know, gives some hope that this too will pass, <laughs> but that together with the kind of community that we have that is supportive and helping each other, um, that we've got a, a really good thing going here to help all of us with these uh, times that continue to test our souls. So that's, that's just something from my heart to you. And uh, I hope it's as encouraging to you to realize you are not alone. You are not alone. So now to go to the President's report. Um, Cynthia Leach, would you come tell us about the WRA ACC scholarship status? Good afternoon. My name is Cynthia Leach. I live in the Windsor and have since 2015 for those of you who have not met yet. Back in December of 2021, the WRA endowed a scholarship at ACC, uh, primarily directed to the LVN and MedTech areas of study. As of today, our current balance in that scholarship fund is $61,060 which I think is marvelous, and thank all of you who have contributed today. For this year, the WRA extended a challenge grant of $7,500 
They will match up to $7,500 from all the rest of us who contribute. And today, 1,100 have been matched. So we have 6,400 more dollars to go this year. So if you're so inclined um, and you'd like to contribute, I have cards and envelopes here. You can always reach out to me. I'll deliver one to your apartment right away. And I hope you consider that, especially like with our, uh, our required minimum distributions and those kind of things that happen periodically. Thank you very much for contributing. Thank you, Cynthia. And now, um, if Sue Gilliam would come forward. Okay. When you move into Westminster, can you pull that light down in front of your, yeah, there you go. Thank you. When you move to Westminster, you are issued with a security button on a ribbon. And when, soon after I moved in here, I may put mine on beads. And people liked what I did. So to cut the story short, now Westminster buys and provides the beads. We have a team of people who thread the beads. And then we have them available at the residence association meetings and at the new residence meetings. Now, I've asked this before, how many people are wearing them? Why aren't you wearing them? <laughs> uh, you know, if you fall in the night and you don't have this on, how are you going to reach for the cord? Can you imagine lying on the floor until the next morning when somebody comes to check on you? The two times that you're liable to fall or trip are when you get up in the middle of the night or when you're taking a shower. Now these beads that we thread on wire, you can wear them in the shower and in bed at night. Now ask those who are not wearing them or don't wear them, Ask yourself, why aren't you wearing it? Okay? We have beads at the back for anyone who would like to get some today. And if anyone would like to join the threaders, please check with me later on. Okay? Thanks. All right, thank you. Can we recognize those beading angels that are in the audience? Come you your hand up if you're a beading angel? All right, all right. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sue. And then I want to call on uh, Inda Shirley, um, who is the chair of the Sustainability Subcommittee. Inda, would you take the mic over there, please? Hi, I'm Inda. I'm the chair of the Sustainability Subcommittee. And a big thank you to all of you. The plastic reusable green box project is a total, I think, success. And that's because all of you are returning the boxes. So kudos to all of you and thank you. Two things. You don't have to put them in your dishwasher. You just rinse them and make sure there's no debris on them. And then you leave them at a drop-off location. Okay, if you have challenges in getting to a drop-off location, please contact somebody on the Sustainability Subcommittee or the Food Committee. We are happy to work out a schedule with you. We'll be responsible for getting them to a drop-off location. And one more thing, please remember to leave them open because if you don't leave them open, here's what the servers do. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for your two committee as well. Uh, is Joey McKenzie here? I'm Joey McKenzie and I'm chair of the food committee currently. And thank you, I will join Enda in thanking you for turning in your food surveys. We have a really lovely response and the last day to turn them in is the 15th. So you have a few more days if you haven't gotten around to it for any reason. Please finish your survey and turn it in because we want everybody's opinion and concerns or applause for the food and beverage service. And if you have lost a survey, we can get you another one. Uh, give me a call or email me or text me and we'll get one to you. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you so much. Okay. And then this is the part of the meeting you've all waited for. Um, Chuck, the year before last, did a presentation based on 66 questions that we recruited from residents regarding what do you want to know about the finances of Westminster because the WRA deals with these committees and, and the kinds of things that were on our agenda today, but the big board, the board of Westminster, uh, deals with all the major funding issues and decisions and personnel and, and so forth. And uh, so Chuck put together a presentation that was so well received at that meeting. And so I asked him if he would update that for this time. And then we also are getting a lot of questions about how is the new building across the way in the Grove going to impact us, or how is it impacting us, or whatever. And so um, Chuck has put together um, a PowerPoint presentation. This is also being recorded, so if you have friends that, that want to hear it or look at it later or whatever, um, it's, uh, it's available. But before we do that, I want to I wanna talk for a minute about and set a little context here before Chuck talks. Um, as your president, I have the responsibility to listen to you and to meet usually every week. Chuck and I get together for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, we, check, we move around what days depending upon schedules and holidays and all kinds of things. Um, but. I get to hear, he gets to hear from me of in depth of the personal concerns that have been reported to me in whatever fashion, uh, hallway conversations, emails, texts, telephone calls, um, and um, in some cases we brainstorm about, well, what can we do about that, or what is the person wanting done about it, and then Chuck shares with me the more in depth um, answers to some of the things that are happening and also um, I get I get to see him um, and how he struggles with these things and so my early morning wake up this morning included another uh, essay that's, that's very important to me and uh, so I, I want to share this with you because when I was in high school, a lot of my English teachers had a huge impact on me, and I remember reading this poem by Rudder Kipling, and I read it again this morning, and oh my gosh, to hear it in the context of our age and our wisdom and our experiences now, this relates so well to what I am able to experience watching Chuck. And also though, it's so, to me, it speaks so much to, again, perspective. And it's Rudyard Kipling's How to Be a Man. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, Chuck, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about and don't deal in lies, or being hated and don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostures just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, Chuck, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. The worn out tools is more related to us with our worn out tools. If you can 
Make a heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe the word of your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your, your turn long after they are gone, again, more of a reference to us, and so hold on to what to when there is nothing in you except the will which says, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue and walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count on you but no one too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds work of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. So, Chuck, welcome to the podium, and we look forward to your presentation. Okay. I did not put 66 questions in this because I should a little bit. I do want to talk about... Um, Westminster's financial strength because I know that you know there are organizations out there that aren't doing very well there's been some bankruptcies and some um, bad quality so I want to talk a little bit about that today but how do we compare I always start off with a little humor right we need a little humor today be nice if my PowerPoint presentation is working right there we go this heat wave is brutal. Not only is it hot enough to fry an egg on the sidewalk, but you can use your mailbox as a toaster oven. <laughs> hot outside, shut up. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a little rain with the hurricane, but I don't guess we are. What are you cooking in God's kitchen? Texas, why? <laughs> What is a smarter financial move, investing in hog futures or loading up the freezer with bacon when it's on sale? <laughs> this is where we started to draw taller bars to please you guys. <laughs> Our only problem is figuring out how to switch these, the expenses and income. Right? How strong are we financially? So this is a summary of the 2022 revenue. Um, you can see that the majority of the income is coming from a total apartment revenue. That's the monthly service fees that you're paying in independent living. Uh, the orange is total health center revenue. Um, the gray is total assisted living revenue. And the yellow is total clinic revenue. And then other operating revenue, which is like guest meals and holiday meals, things like that, doesn't really even show up. In 2024, this is the budget revenue summary. You'll notice that the, the pie chart, the sections for the independent living revenue is getting a little smaller. And what's happening with the Carlisle being brought on board is more private pay revenue is starting to come into our community, uh, both at the healthcare center side. So comparatively, um, healthcare is making about nine and a half million dollars this year, and it was around five, six million dollars um, in 2022. Um, so this is good for our community. The gray area, again, is total assisted living revenue, um, and then total assisted living dementia, memory care revenue is the yellow box, and then the clinic revenue. Um, all of those areas have grown, so that should help us in maintaining lower monthly service fees going forward and bringing more revenue into the community. Of course, Life care residents, you all are our priority. We're always going to make sure that we have enough room in every level of care um, to meet the needs of our life care residents. But I just wanted to show you this graph that Car bringing the Carlisle on board for us enabled us to take outside admissions, Medicare admissions, um, and insurance admissions into our health care center, and we're rehabilitating people very successfully. Um, like we have wanted to do for a long time, but we were kind of in a bedlock situation and weren't able to do that. So this is good for our community. 
Um, days cash on hand is always the question that I get. How are we doing? Do we have money? Um, the orange and kind of tannish lines, uh, the orange line is the Fitch Triple B rating median, and then the Fitch median is the tan line. You can see green, and the 2023 number is around 1,200 days cash on hand. This was at the end of 2023. It's about 1,000 today because it's cost more to run Westminster than it did a year ago. But still very healthy and almost twice what the CCAC median is, which is really strong. Um, this is a nice graph because it shows Westminster <coughs> compared to the medians, the Fit Triple B median, uh, and also the, the Fitch median for average age of the community. So I know that one of our buildings is 57 years old, but um, if you look at it financially, our campus is about six and a half years old. So we spend a lot of money reinvesting into the community every year we're reinvesting in capital expenses projects about three and a half to four million dollars is reinvested in the community every year and so that age of our community continues to go down i know we have leaking pipes that are being replaced but all of those investments brings down the average age of our community and makes us, us stronger comparatively debt service coverage ratio um, a really important um, metric. So it's a debt service coverage ratio reflects the organization's ability to fund its debt service with current cash flow from net cash revenues and net entrance fees. Um, so the average in the industry, Fitch Triple B rating is 2.30. In our 2023 audited financials, we are 3.65. So we have three and a half times the amount of income that we need to pay down our debt, um, to pay on our debt service for the year, which is excellent. Um, over the last four years, we've averaged around 3.13. The, the debt covenant, the bond covenant that we have to meet is 1.20. In uh, 2022, actually, I'm sorry, 2021, when we did a feasibility study for the Carlisle construction, it, it um, projected us to be around 2.4. Uh, for the year 2023-2024. So 2023 being at 3.65, so we're outperforming our feasibility study for the expansion, which is validation for myself and the board um, that we did the right thing. So monthly fee increases versus our competitors. Um, I, this was a question that I received last time. And you can see Westminster's maintained fairly steady. Um, we've tried to be around 3% if we could. In 2023, it was a rough year. Um, we had a huge insurance increase um, that hit us on the business side and also on the health insurance side. Um, so, and we had a lot of labor pressure. So we passed around or passed on a 6% increase. But most of our competitors um, in the year 2022 did anywhere between you know nine and twelve percent. So over the years, living at Westminster over the last ten years has actually saved you money. Um, we're about eleven percent lower than our competitors are at this time. So that's also a great statistic. And the industry um, in 2022 and 2023 had to pass huge increases on because they were not prepared for the labor pressures and wage pressures that they've had. A lot of our communities, even in the LCS portfolio, are using agency staff, lots of agency staff, about 20 to 30%. Some of them still don't have their dining rooms open because they can't find enough staff. We've never been in that situation, thankfully. So some questions and answers. Um, how is the budget monitored, tracked, and adjusted? So every, every month, budget reports are compiled and provided to leadership, the board, and LCS management. All invoices are approved by the directors and by me. Um, variance reports are provided by directors for any budget variance of $200 or more. The reports are provided to the accounting director, myself, and the board of trustees. Um, adjustments to the budget must be approved by the board of directors. Very few changes to the budget are made. Um, sometimes there's a project that was not anticipated in the capital improvement budget 
These are approved by the board. I'll give you an example this year. Um, besides the plumbing replacement project that we're taking on, um, the elevators, the two core elevators in the Preston and the service elevator were scheduled to be um, modernized, they call it, where all the mechanicals are replaced. Um, and that was scheduled to be done in 2025, but because we've been having a lot of issues with the service elevator especially, we moved those elevators up for modernization in this year's budget. So the board approved about $390,000 to modernize the elevators. Um, sounds great, doesn't it? But I will tell you that the problem we had with the B-Wing elevator was that it was a modernized elevator, and it took us a long time to get a modern motor for it. Um, I hope that these modernized elevators perform better. How can you tell if a CCRC is financially viable? Um, so here are some important questions that you can ask. What is the occupancy ratio in independent living? Ideally, you want to go to a community that's around 90% occupied. If it's lower than that, then there might be a problem. Um, what are your bond ratings? So not every community has debt, but most of them do. And when they do, they have bond ratings that they go after. Ideally, you want to go to a community that is rated, um, that is investment grade, and is at least triple B, um, triple B minus. Are financial covenants being met? So you don't want to go to a community that is not meeting their financial covenants, like the 1.2 um, debt service coverage ratio, or maybe they don't have 180 days cash on hand to meet their bond covenants. And the reason you might not want to do that is because they may place your um, entrance fee refund in a queue. And so you might have to wait more than 60 to 120 days for your refund, or your family might have to wait. Um, I've seen some communities around the area have residents waiting for a refund for two years or more. Um, so you want to be careful about that too. Make sure that they're able to meet their, their um, bond rating and have enough cash on hand. Is there positive cash flow from operations? So ideally you don't want to go to a place that is losing money every year. You can't sustain that. No community could, right? We can't sustain it at our house. Um, the same thing is true of CCRCs, Continued Care Retirement Communities. You want to have a positive margin. Even nonprofits want to have a margin. That margin that we can reinvest in our communities and keep our grounds and um, equipment up to, up to date. How does Westminster pay for unexpected projects like air conditioning pipes? So um, many years ago, about 2013, 2014, um, the board designated uh, a replacement reserve account. So we set aside money that we had on hand in a special replacement reserve account for emergencies just like the HVAC um, plumbing pipes. Um, there is about 12 million in the account today and it is going to pay for the majority of the work that is taking place um, in the Preston with a C-wing replacement. It's already paid for um, about $680,000 of the A and B wing work that we did. Um, so there's about a million that's been approved for the additional work and, and that'll be done begin over the last next couple months. And I'll talk more about that at my chat. Um, what triggers a budget change? Well, typically we try not to have those. Um, and, but it's typically a significant change in anticipated expenses. A significant market rate for a particular staff occurs beyond what is budgeted. Um, so a few years ago, there was a big increase, this is probably 2019, um, there was a big increase in the uh, market rate for CNAs and nurses, and we were kind of getting our clocks clean, basically. We were getting beat in the open market, so we made an adjustment to our um, staffing, our salaries to help compete. That was a budget adjustment. Um, on the mechanical side, the Repair side, we typically budget about $200,000 a year for contingency expenses. Um, and those would be like um, an air conditioning unit going out that we didn't know was getting near its, its end of its useful life, or um, which we've had to replace um, kitchen hood or exhaust hood, um, which we did this year on the um, Carlisle already, um, past its warranty, just barely past its warranty by about two weeks. Um, yeah, don't get me started about that. Um, 
What is the difference between a for-profit community and a not-for-profit community? So the competitor across the street, does everybody know what it's going to be? For-profit. I love you all. That's exactly right. It's going to be for-profit. And who do they want to pay? Who do they want to pay? They want to pay dividends to their investors, right? Um, so they want to make money on the, on the folks that are moving in there and pay dividends to their investors. Um, so they're really profit driven, responsible to corporate investors and or shareholders who are interested in making money on their investment, of course, um, not necessarily the needs of the residents. Um, a lot of times they're unstable, the organization is easily affected by economic fluctuations, so if um, the market, the, the housing market goes down, typically their census goes down, then they increase their monthly service fees to make up for the difference. Um, they typically have a lot of turnover in staff, um, more so than a non-for-profit. No community oversight, they're overseen by corporate investors and, and typically a board that's um, maybe in Chicago or, or wherever um, that's looking at the bottom line and really driving things towards that bottom line. Um, they have inferior quality because earnings is the barometer, earnings is the success. That's what's um, used to measure success in those kind of communities, not necessarily the quality of the care. Um, not for profits like Westminster, they're va we're values driven, we care for the needs of the residents. Um, that's our most important goal. We want to be five stars, we want to be the best around, um, we want to have a stable workforce. Um, we also want to have stable residents. We want you to maintain a high occupancy and ideally be happy most of the time. Um, community oversight, a volunteer board of directors consisting of local community leaders, and a lot of those leaders have had or have loved ones that live in the community, which really makes a difference. And quality is our barometer. Um, we're, that is what really drives us and our performance. What are things we as residents can do to keep our monthly fees from rising? Anybody worried about that? Nobody. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> One of the things is eliminate waste. Um, that could be utilities, food, etc. Um, some of you walking around with three bananas. I know you're not going to eat three bananas today. There's more bananas when you're ready for one. Go get one. But don't waste the bananas. Don't put them in your recycle bin. They can't be recycled. Refer the, to the community, both residents and associates. This is a great place to work. You make it that way. You really do. It's also a great place to live. Um, despite what might be going wrong, there's a lot more going right. All you have to do is look for it. What was it? Abraham Lincoln said that if you, if you look for the good in people, you should surely find it, right? I think that's true. Um, Help us maintain high occupancy because it's everything's easier when we're higher. Higher the occupancy, the easier it is. Uh, the budget looks great when we're running 93% or above. That's our goal. Um, speak positively about Westminster. We don't have mold. We don't have a lot of turnover. Um, it's really a great place to live. Um, believe that. I think most of you do believe it. Be, be positive when you speak about Westminster. Support Westminster in our mission. Um, try to be kind to your associates. Even when the elevator's not working, it's probably not the associate that caused the elevator not working. Um, even when you're having a bad day, um, it's probably not the associate that caused it. The, the hospitality ambassador server that's waiting on your table and is taking too long for that steak, um, they're probably working as quickly as they can. Um, be kind to your neighbors. Don't take your dogs into the dining room. Don't tie your dogs up. Make sure they're in control at all times. Um, don't have parties at midnight. Don't burn your food. Try not to run into the walls with your mobile scooter. And walkers and canes. Um, don't rip our shades. Somebody ripped our shade there. Um, help us take care of our community, our buildings, our grounds, our equipment, and do bring your concerns to our attention. We absolutely do want to make it right. Um, and we try to, every day, work to make everything right. 
How do we rank in quality? So I got a comment in the resident experience survey just the other day that I care more about awards than I do about taking care of the buildings. I like awards. Don't get me wrong. I do. They help our community stay full. They help market our community. And they are measures of our metrics. And that's what drives our quality. And our quality separates us from everybody else. But the most important thing to me is you and the associates that work here. And my, I am not sitting in my office every day trying to think of ways to make you mad at me. <laughs> I never, ever would sabotage an elevator. I want all of the elevators to work all of the time. I use the elevators myself. I no longer run up the stairs. So I get it. We want every elevator to work. We want everything to work all the time. But things do break, just like they did in your home. The good news is we're going to take care of it, and we're going to keep after it until it's resolved. While we're doing all of that, and while we're working to impress you and wow you, we pick up awards along the way. But one of those awards, five stars, 16th year, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That's more than a ward. That's, that's Medicare and Medicaid stamp on Westminster that we're a five-star facility. Only 10% of the communities in Texas can be five stars. We're the only community in Texas that's had it for 16 years in a row since it became a thing. And that's pretty impressive. We also received best nursing home long-term care and short-term care by U.S. News and World Report, and that's based on those quality metrics that we have to report to the state and to the federal government every day. Um, Westminster's experience modifier dropped to 50.50. Not a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to me because that means we have a safe culture for our associates, and our associates aren't getting hurt all the time. And that helps keep our insurance premiums down, which helps keep your monthly service fees down. National Top Workplace Award, Culture Excellence Award, USA Today. So recently you heard that we were awarded best, our top workplace in Austin. We received this award recently in USA Today. Um, I didn't buy the advertising package, so I'm not gonna advertise it, but you know that that's pretty cool. Um, best awards, these are voted on by all of you. US News and World Report for Independent Living, Memory Care, Assisted Living, and CCRC. So we swept all categories, which is pretty impressive. So to tell you a little bit more about the CMS five-star rating, the best 10% in each state receive a five-star. The middle 70% of facilities can receive anywhere from a two-star to a four-star in each category. The worst 20% receive a one-star rating. What are the components? So the rating system features an overall quality rating of one to five stars based on facility performance on three types of performance measures, each of which has its own five-star rating. So one of those is health inspections. Every year, randomly, the state health and human services department comes in and inspects us. They audit us. Um, they look at every medical record. They look at every, every record we have, they inspect our kitchens, they inspect our housekeeping, inspect the healthcare center, and it drives us nuts for about a week. And you'll see us all running around like chickens with our head cut off. Um, it also it ranks staffing rating, measures based on nursing home staffing levels. levels. You've heard uh, President Biden talk about staffing levels recently, and CMS is now pushing a mandatory staffing level. Um, Quality measures, so those metrics, um, that means falls, skin tears, rehabilitation, success, um, flu vaccines, COVID, all of those things. Every, every sickness, every illness, every negative outcome is all measured and reported to the state. And we're judged on that, and that maintains a five-star rating. And then the overall rating is all those three things together um, creates the overall five-star rating. Um, and, and so we're very blessed to have that. So you may have heard that, like I said, President Biden um, came out with new staffing ratios. I had some emails about 
Oh my goodness, Chuck, are you worried about that? I'm really not, and this is why. Our budget to staffing ratio for our nursing in, in the healthcare center is 5.2 hours per patient day total. And our LVN RN staffing ratio is 1.38 hours per patient day. The Texas average for nursing homes today is about 3.20 hours per patient day. The new CMS requirement is 0.55 hours per patient day of RN and a total of 3.48 hours per patient day for total nursing. The mandatory date for that is in, in three years. Everybody has to be compliant in three years. Um, so you can see we are well above the national, the state average and national average, but also above these requirements. They mean nothing to us, except that I'm glad that they are, are telling everybody that they need to get to at least a minimum staffing ratio because there's folks out there that are they're running unsafe buildings, and there's one-star buildings out there, there's two-star buildings that are running staffing ratios way below those thresholds. So I, I, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> And I think having something is better than nothing. It's going to be hard for some folks to get to, I can tell you that. Um, best awards we already talked about. We talked about this. Mrs. Shirley did a great presentation on these takeout containers. I just want to mind, remind you this helps save money um, and also reduces our carbon footprint, hopefully. Um, please do return these takeout containers. I know some of you may be tempted to keep them and create some kind of art project or something, but I'd like you to turn those in um, and so we can reuse them. Um, Alzheimer's Texas fundraising. These are the upcoming, uh, I'm not sure about this car wash for residents. It's the first time I believe the committee's ever done a car wash. There may be some kind of liability release form signed before you have your car wash. I'm not sure. But, they're going to try and see what happens. Um, that's July the 26th. Uh, karaoke in the Rowan Tree Lounge. I'm sure there's a lot of good singers in this group. Um, that's on July the 15th and every third Monday through October. Um, and then Kinder Gives Back August the 9th. Our dog show on September the 13th. Um, silent auction on October the 18th. And I appreciate everybody that's uh, already sent me emails of support and uh, donated to the cause. Everybody knows what these star cards are, right? Okay. And our next meeting will be in October, and I will be doing a presentation on phase four. Um, our board, many of our board members will be here. We're also going to have um, huge printouts, posters of all the plans, all the different areas so that we can walk you through what phase four will bring to us and give you a really detailed explanation of what's coming. Um, this likely will be delayed until probably April of um, 25 instead of January, which is not necessarily bad news. Um, thank you all very much. We have some time. There's about 10 minutes. If anyone has any questions of Chuck or follow-up, Yes, Kathy. Is the all the buy-in like here, or is it rental? It's rental. So the monthly service fees will probably be more expensive than we are. Um, the community fee or buy-in, like you say, will will be less expensive. I will warn. I don't know what the pricing is like, but a lot of times rentals. Um, nickel and dime you. So the question was, is the Grove a buy-in community like us or is it a rental? And the answer is it's a rental. Um, so their pricing structure, monthly service fees will be higher. Um, and then they, as you need more care, your monthly service fee will increase. I'll give you an example. My grandmother was in a rental and she started out at $4,800 a month and in about six months she was at 9,000. The reason she she was a diabetic and she wanted to have more than two baths a week um, and she sometimes wanted to eat in her room and so every time she wanted something that would just ratchet up. Yes, Max. Chuck, can you 
I'll, I'll bring it to you. I can hear you. Go ahead. Mine's not a question, but I think it might be helpful for a lot of new people here to recount how the board decided to refinance the bonds for the Windsor. So actually both. Um, and originally when the Windsor was financed, it was financed at six and a half percent. The bond market was not very favorable. In 2016, we refinanced the Windsor bonds at 3.24 percent, which is awesome saving us about $14 million over the life of the bonds. The Carlisle, we financed with bank financing because when COVID hit, everything kind of shut down and the bond market started to spike. And so the bonds were very unattractive. So we did bank financing at great interest rate. It was about 2.25%. Then we waited for the bond market to come down and then we went out and got tax exempt bonds. So we financed the Carlisle expansion at 3.38%. A really cool thing that, that just occurred, and I really should have talked about it, and you just reminded me. Um, about three months ago, the bond market was high, and we had bond investors that had given us uh, that great interest rate, the 3.38%. So we were able to buy back, and, and they want to reinvest their money um, into the higher bond market at the 5.5%. So, we took about $8 million and said, hey, we're going to buy back some of our bonds. And so we're about, I think we did 6.2, sir. We were able to buy about $6.2 million of our own bonds back, which also um, decreases our expense by about $350,000 a year over the life of the bonds. And, and as, the, as the market fluctuates, we may have other opportunities to do that. So we retired some more of our debt, which is awesome. Yes, sir, I can't see who that is back there. The days of me adding up a column of million dollar figures in my head are long gone. So the pie charts of revenue and expenses, I would like to see the grand total for that as well. In other words, what's the 100% of the pie? So the 100% of the pie today is about $39 million. And you know, before the Carlisle expansion, it was about 31. Other questions? One of the things I would, oh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Just a strange question about the expanded uh, Who's CMS, first? Uh, okay. The CMS thing, because yeah. I now the number is going to escape me, but but I think um, it said the new requirement was something like fifty-five point point five five nursing hours for, for, for registered nursing. But what you said um, we were doing was point five two. Yes, but our, so ours is a mix of LVNs and RNs. So licensed vocational nurses and RNs. So we're running around, I think it was 1.48 actually for us. But their new requirement is 0.55 hours per patient day. Yes. Okay, so, so are we meeting? We're in great shape. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, was there another one? Yes, right here. just before Christmas, and I missed out on uh, a phase four discussion. Where can I get more detailed information about phase four? For what's planned now? I know you're going to do something in the future. Yeah. Um, so you should be able to get a copy of my presentation from the reception desk. Any reception desk should have it, and they can let you borrow or make a copy of it, and then I said I'm going to do a big presentation and we'll have slides and presentation that I'll do as well as posters around the Harris Bell Hall to look at the spaces and actually walk through and ask questions of the department heads. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay, was there another question? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. What, what is our occupancy rate? Our occupancy rate? What is our occupancy rate? Where? In independent living? Well, you said 90%. I like 93%. Where are we? That's where it's at. 93%. Is that why you like it? That's why I like it. That's right. <laughs> That's the budget. So, you know, we're working to budget all the time. Um, and if we, you know, we eke a little bit above 93%, that's just fine. That's awesome. Um, most organizations are budgeting around 86 to 88%. So those um, well-functioning organizations, I believe, are usually running 90% or better. That's a good litmus test. Yes, sir. Is that 93% number of units? Yes. That's Can you the repeat the question? 90. So 90, is the 93% the number of units? Yes, it is. 93% is the number of units. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we're right on time to go have a drink. And thank you, Chuck, for the presentation.